I'm Dr. Paul Gardner Stephen from the Seville Project and Flinders University, and today we're going to try out our, uh, our backbone uh, mesh telephony solution underground. Uh, we want to see how far it will actually propagate, because there are some issues with radio propagation underground uh, that you don't have above ground. Um, and it will just be another good test to see you know, how many hops we can get with these phones. And we're going to start thinking about applications for, uh, for mining, because uh, we'll be doing uh, placing calls around corners underground and all sorts of fun things like that. Uh, and also, you know, if you like, search and rescue in rubble and these sorts of things. Understanding the radio propagation and um, characteristics of these phones is actually uh, going to be very useful for that as well. So we will uh, set ourselves up. We've got a nice long measuring tape and uh, we'll make calls from bat phone to bat phone and we'll also use the, uh, the village telco uh, mesh potatoes as well. Um, so we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to make a call to Thomas here and uh, Thomas is going to walk into the cave um, as far as he can, and we'll see how far apart we can actually get the phone. So theory says we should be able to get about 30 metres uh, underground with all the multipath and other things that will cause us trouble. So let me uh, give Thomas a quick call here. Numbers in my uh, call log, which is nice and handy. Oops. Ringing. Hello, Thomas. Hello, hello. Excellent. So we, uh, we have connections. So if you can start Sorry. walking back into the cave. And... Yep, so I can still hear Thomas nice and clear. So we're, uh, we're getting there on the tape. We've just seen uh, uh, 50 feet go past. So of course we're in the mouth of the cave here, so we may actually get um, better than the theory predicts. And if that's the case, we'll start moving in and see if it... Uh... Yep, keep going. Thomas has got his light on now, he's getting deeper into the cave. Okay, and now he's just breaking up. Yep, I think you're breaking up there a bit, Thomas. Stop. Okay, you can hear me again now. Okay, so Thomas has actually just gone down a uh, down into the cave a bit, so we actually don't have line of sight anymore. So, um, Thomas, if you can walk forward a bit, and we'll actually follow you in so that we have line of sight, because really this initial test is about line of sight distance. So we'll uh, we'll move into the cave a little bit. Yep. So uh, you uh, go ahead of me. Uh, don't pull too much harder, because we're actually nearly at the thirty metre mark on the uh, on the tape. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So move in. Just don't uh, pull. No. Keep going. Um, just once you've got tension on the tape, just uh, take it gently. Yep, okay, good, yep, and uh, I'm following you now, so um, I'll just pull it right out to 30 metres. Okay, stop, yep, okay, good, so, uh, yep, so we have 30 metres and we have uh, perfectly clear conversation at the mouth of the cave. We'll just move in a little bit more so that the uh, any reflection problems will be uh, um, as bad as they'll get. Okay, so let's move ahead, Thomas. Thomas is getting into a, a lower part of the cave now as well. Yep, excellent. So, so we're still going well. So in fact, if the, uh, if the camera just looks up for a moment, um, you'll be able to see that we're actually we're well and truly in the cave now. And um, we've got 30 metres happening uh, without any trouble, so this is really good. So. What we'll do in a second, we'll start um, deploying more phones out and uh, see how many people we can uh, get in the chain into the cave. Okay. We'll keep the call open, Thomas. Um, okay, so it turns out the, uh, the 30 metres that we've tested gets Thomas to the corner, so we're actually going to have to start putting phones around corners because uh, we've just done a quick test and line of sight underground is, in fact, <laughs> critically important, as we knew that it would be. So uh, we'll start getting some more of the team here to... Uh, to move down uh, with their phones and Thomas and I will see how far we can keep talking and uh, then we'll measure the total distance back uh, when we're done. Okay. Okay, so uh, here we are, we're about a, a little over 100 metres into the cave. I'm sitting on a, a log that uh, goodness knows how it got here into the cave um, and uh, using a mesh potato and a, a nice Telstra rental phone and uh, I'm talking uh, to someone who's sitting outside the cave. Hello, are you there? Excellent, you can, you can hear me nice and clear. 
Excellent. Excellent. Um, so it's working, so we're using maybe $500 to $1,000 of equipment, and we've got um, pretty easy communications into the cave. And I mean, I'm using a, a landline here just because you know, we can, but um, the mobile phones we've got work exactly the same down here. In fact, they're actually carrying the call from the, uh, the surface uh, into here as we speak. So it's all working really well. I'm happy. Yep. Okay, well, we've been in, uh, we've made a, a phone call from about, uh, I think it was 88 meters in the end we measured with the tape. Um, call quality was good, it worked really well. So uh, yeah, we've learned a lot today. We know that we can do at least the um, 35 meters, probably even a bit longer, which is, I think, um, more distance than what the, the theory was protecting, predicting with multi-path and echo problems. So yeah, we're really happy that we can uh, make phone calls from underground. So the next step will probably be to uh, go down a mine or uh, go to a, a training site where we can go under a, a rubble pile and start uh, simulating some search and rescue kind of activities there, which would be uh, really good. But uh, we're absolutely happy with what we've achieved today. It's good.